Kelly Mayer, hello! I'm laying over in one of the world's oldest cities to experience 3400 years of Athens history. We'll be visiting many other UNESCO World Heritage sites including getting a great exercise by hiking the iconic Acropolis, taking a walk at the best known Greek ancient gathering place, joining a 150 year old tradition of the changing of the guard and getting a fresh breath of air at the National Garden. Not to mention visiting one of the greatest temples in the ancient world and retracing the birthplace of the modern Olympics. As well, picking up some great souvenirs at the Athens oldest flea markets and finally getting around without becoming a victim of pickpocketing. All done under a tight budget, all done under 14 hours, safely, inexpensively, and easily. Located in the Attiki region where the earliest human presence started somewhere between 11th and 7th millennium BC, the classical Athens was a powerful city-state, a center for arts, learning, and philosophy, and widely referred to as a cradle of Western civilization and the birthplace of democracy. Today, it's the capital and most popular city in Greece. With so much history, so many things to see and do, let's get going. Hey folks, welcome to Greece. We have uh, Athens. Um, let's hope we get through the immigration quickly. Hopefully, this process is not more organized. There you go. If you are doing a layover, get your bag checked into the last destination. Actually, you're flying with different airlines, then you can get your bags and store it somewhere right here or check in early and drop out the bag. Okay, and definitely you need to get some euros. Airport exchange rate really sucks. Don't get to exchange here. I recommend you go outside bank machine to a major bank. Just pull out like 100, uh, 100 euros, that should be sufficient for a layover. So I got my euros from the bank machine. Let's go and get our metro tickets and head down to Cinema Square. Follow me. So I bought my return tickets. I'm only going to be here for a day as well. So you save two euros if you buy the return ticket versus one way. And this is our train. The safest way to get to the Sendama Square at the heart of Athens is by the 24-hour express bus X95. You can buy the tickets on board. However, Athens Metro is the fastest and the easiest way to get there. But on this journey, I was a victim of pickpocketing on board. And I'd like to share this advice with you. So in a very crowded subways, especially near the Sendama Square, you have to be very careful. Pickpocketing is pandemic here in um, Athens Metro. The thieves one of the favorite places that like you know, the luggage racks because they know that people coming from the airport has lots of phone exchange, has lots of phones on them. Uh, they will actually take the phones and actually sell it in places like Albania where a lot of the gangs are from. Uh, the best way to protect yourself is not have any currency on you at any at time, like in your pockets and rather have a money belt. Um, another thing is you have to look out for like whole group of men because they actually work in really big groups or group of people they tend to look at each other. That's the time when you are tend to look really, really careful. And if they come closer, just push them aside. You don't need to be nice, just push them aside. The Cinema Square or the Constitution Square is the heart of Athens and houses the Greek Parliament since 1934. All attractions are accessible on foot from here, no more than 20 minutes walk apart. Alternatively, Athens Metro Station can be found outside on all major tourist sites. It offers fares for two trips, 90 minutes or 24 hour passes. Finally, we reached the Cinema Square and I told you it was easy, not that bad. Um, if you have lots of luggage, you can actually go through the um, elevator on that side or you can just walk out. But that being said, I need to check into my hotel, so... 
However, for extended or overnight layover, I recommend you stay close by. For group level 2 or more, or if you prefer a lot of privacy, Alice in Athens offer private apartments with extremely comfortable premium beds, on-street bathrooms, a full kitchen and self-serve bar, and free coffee and tea all day. If you're a solo traveler or on a tight budget, Athens Backpacker offers clean and comfortable dorm beds, a great social area, and best of all, free basic breakfast. I'd like to thank them both for being my episode sponsor. Thanks guys, let's get started. So let's get started our journey by paying a visit to my favorite shopping paradise for a souvenir bargain, the History Monastraki Flea Market, the oldest in Athens. This is Athens Flea Market and it's a little bit quiet today because it's sunny morning. Um, this is where you can come pick up some souvenirs and little things you can bring home but there's one rule that you need to follow and that is bargain and bargain hard. Between Monastraki and the Acropolis, a five minutes walk away is home to the best known classical Greek agora. The word means to congregate, a place for the citizens of ancient Athens to meet, bond, and deliberate on the issue of the day. So this is the ancient agora of Athens. It is located northwest of Acropolis. Uh, this used to be a large public square where religious, commercial, social, and theater plays out. In other words, this used to be the heart of the ancient city. The ancient Agora was a dynamic place where great thinkers like Socrates and Pythagoras, among others, would meet and where the ordinary citizen would come and interact with their peers, voice their concern and agree on a solution and the course of action. It represents the ethos on what most of us in the Western world enjoy today, a sense of freedom, justice, equality, and social conscience. Among Agra's many temples, altars, and other shrines located on the northwest side and on top of Agrolian Kalinos Hill, the Temple of Hephaestus is one of the best preserved of its type in Greece. The impressive temple was commissioned on Pericles and completed in 415 BC, two years before the Parthenon and other massive building projects of Athens' Golden Age. Built to honor Hephaestus, the patron god of metalworking, craftsmanship, fire, and Athena ordained, the patron goddess of potter and craft. The structure was built around the same time as the Parthenon. Around the 7th century, the temple was turned into a Christian church dedicated to St. George. In the 19th century, the church was used as a burial place for Protestants and many European Fahilis, who died in the 1821 Greek War of Independence. The building remained in use until 1834 when it was the site of the official welcome of King Otto, the first king of the modern Greek state. The largest structure on the site is an impressive colonized stora of Atalanus. The stora is a covered walkway, a place for Athenians to meet, walk, and do business. A Hellenistic version of a mall, with 42 shop space over two levels. Built in the 2nd century BC, the restoration took place between 1953 to 1956 by the American School of Classical Studies with the financial support of John D. Rockefeller. During the excavation, the archaeologists unearthed over 160,000 items dating from the Leolithic times to the 19th century. Today, you'll find a museum on the lower level with the remnant and ruin that were part of the Agra during the Hellenistic period, including sculptural pediment from the top of the Temple of Hephaestus. The upper level of the store houses a permanent exhibition of sculptures from the ancient Agra, representing Athenian art from the late classical, Hellenistic, and the Roman periods. 
Towards the upper part of ancient Agra is a restored Byzantine church of Holy Apostle which was built in the 11th century. Like many Byzantine churches, you can see bits and pieces of marble from the ancient building and the temple that was destroyed by the early Christians because they were pagan. The church of Holy Apostle was restored to its original form from 1954 to 1956. Along with the temple of her faces, it's the only building in the Agra to survive intact. Just 15 minutes on foot and on a limestone hill high up above the city is home to the most iconic ancient city and the symbol of Greece, the Acropolis of Athens. As Acropolis is one of the most famous ancient archaeological sites in the world, this is one attraction I consider a must-see, even if you have to let go of other attractions. Now I know during your layover, you probably really want to see the Acropolis but realistically, if you can see the lineup, sometimes it go up to 2 hours and also you have to hike up to the top um, What I recommend is if you're short in time or have a really short layover uh, go over to the Acropolis Museum uh, you get to see lots of artifacts, also cheaper too The Acropolis of Athens began on the lower slope of the Acropolis Hill. On the southern slope is a structure of Theater of Delosis. The first orchestra terrace constructed on the site around mid to late 6th century BC with a capacity up to 17,000. On the southwest slope is a larger Thessalian theater. It was built in 161 AD by the great hero Atticus in the memory of his Roman wife. Originally a sleep slope theater with a three-story stone front wall and a wooden roof made of expensive cellar of Lebanese timber. It was used as a venue for music concerts with a capacity of 5,000. It lasted intact until it was destroyed and left in ruin by the Heruli in 267 AD until it was restored using pentelic marbles in the 1950s. Since then, it has been a main venue of the Athens Festival, which runs from May through October each year, featuring a variety of acclaimed Greek as well as international performances. You beat the lineup, that doesn't mean it's done now. The hike takes about 15 minutes or so to get up here. Look at this. Not many people because you're really, really able to enjoy it more when it's uh, less crowded. So, let's take our final steps up there and try to enjoy as much as we can. The Acropolis rises 500 feet above the sea level with a surface area of about 7.4 acres. During the ancient time, it was known more properly as Cecopia, after the legendary serpent man Cecrops, the supposed first Athenian king. The Acropolis has been inhabited since the prehistoric times. Over the century, the Acropolis has been many things. In addition to a home to the kings, a citadel, it was also a mythical home to the gods, a religious center, and today a tourist attraction. Well, ladies and gentlemen, finally, welcome to Acropolis of Athens in Greek. Acrop, the first part means the highest point or the peak, and polis means the city. So, welcome to the highest peak in the city.
Well, there's evidence that hell was inhabited as far back as the 4th millennium BC and the Acropolis flat top is the result of thousands of years of construction, beginning as far back as the Bronze Age. It wasn't without Pericles, a prominent and influential Greek statesman, and the general of Athens in his golden age who coordinated the construction of the site's most important present remains, including the Parthenons in the 5th century BC. Undoubtedly, this is the most famous building here in all of Greece, the Parthenons. And it's a, a former temple dedicated to the uh, patron goddess of Athens, Athena. And it's built during the height of the Athenian Empire between 447 to 432 BC. <laughs> The Parthenon is the most important surviving building and regarded as an enduring symbol of classical Greece, Athenian democracy, and Western civilization. Its decorative sculpture are considered some of the high point of Greek art. The Parthenon itself replaced the older temple of Athena, which historians call the Pre-Parthenon or Older Parthenon, that was destroyed during the Persian invasion of 480 BC. Like most Greek temples, it served as a practical purpose as the city treasury. To the Athenian who built it, the Parthenon and other Periclean monuments of the Acropolis were seen as fundamentally as a celebration of Hellenic victory over Persian invaders, and as a thanksgiving to the god for that victory. In the final decade of 6th century, the Parthenon was converted into a Christian church and dedicated to the Virgin Mary. While the Parthenon was the most impressive temple on the Acropolis, the old temple of Athena was built to accommodate the religious ritual and to house an ancient wood cult statue of Athena. The temple was a replacement for a previous building damaged on the Acropolis following the Persian attack on the city in 480 BC, and was funded by surplus from the war treasury. Now this is a smaller but also very iconic temple which are dedicated to goddess Athena, Pelion, Erectus, and other deities. It was constructed between 421 to 406 BC and during the 1970s and 80s uh, the reconstruction and restoration work began using the original cast of blocks and columns which are now found in British Museum. There are six or five or six statues inside this temple which are now uh, removed and put in the preservation at the Acropolis Museum. On the way down, there's an ancient Greek mausoleum on the southwest side of the Acropolis dedicated to Gaius Julius Atagalus Epithetane, a prince from the Kingdom of Commagenes, today's Syria. On the north side of the Acropolis, there's a Roman form, the Hadrian's Library built by the Roman Emperor Hadrian in 132 AD. So if you got time, check it out. Along the way, you see many of the ancient remains at no extra cost. One of them are located on the Adriano Street and belong to the monumental Hadrianic building built in 107 to 138 AD. The so-called the Panellinium is a meeting place for deputies of city-state to participate in a permanent conference. there is the changing of guard every hour in the day on the cinema square in front of the Hellenic Parliament and the presidential mansion. But if your layover happens to be on Sunday morning, you are in for a treat. Every Sunday at 11 a.m. there is a full changing of guard ceremony with official customs. The Greek guard or the Emzos are a member of presidential guard found outside the Hellenic Parliament who guard the monument of the unknown soldier. They have become synonymous with the city of Athens and were originally founded in 1868 as a regiment of the Greek army. The duty of the soldiers are in part a ceremonial nature. Every soldier guards about an hour, three times in total every 48 hours. Throughout the 60 minutes, they have to stand perfectly still until it's time to switch with another guard. The uniform worn by Ezol are very special as each one is entirely made by hand. The design is based on the traditional uniform worn during the War of Independence. The formal ceremonial uniform worn by the guard is white. This uniform is worn on Sundays, bank holidays, and when there's a visiting dignitary. 
Aries. Directly behind the Parliament building is home to a 38-acre public park, the National Garden. Originally, the Laurel Garden was commissioned by Queen Amalia in 1838 and was complete by 1840 as a private garden for the kings. The queen is said to spend at least three hours a day personally taking care of it. She personally planted the iconic palm trees. In 1923, the park was opened to the public and renamed the National Garden. In honor of Amalia of Greece, the entrance was moved to the 12 palm trees she planted and the street in front was renamed Queen Amalia Avenue. Since then, the National Garden is open to the public from sunrise to sunset. Also located on the ground of the National Garden is a historic and iconic Zapian Hall. Initially, the public land was allocated by the Greek Parliament for the building specifically for the renewal of the Olympic Games in the modern world. The cornerstone was laid on January 20, 1874 and was opened in October 20, 1888. The Zapion was used during the 1896 Summer Olympic as a main fencing hall. A decade later in the 1906 Intercalated Game, it was used as the Olympic Village and served as a press center during the 2004 Games. It was here that documenting formalizing Greece's accession to the European community was signed in 1979. The interior consists of a symmetrical plan around a circular atrium. The front facade has a three-part layout with a main, two-story building with a Corinthian portico and two-sided wing. Approximately 300 meters from the Zapion is the Temple of the Olympian Zeus, a name originally from his position as the head of the Olympian god, the god of sky and thunder. Construction began in 515 BC during the rule of the Athenian tyrant, who envisioned building the greatest temple in the ancient world, but was not completed until the reign of Roman Emperor Hadrian in 131 AD, some 638 years after the project began. During the Roman period, the temple had 104 colossal columns and was renamed as the largest temple in Greece and housed one of the largest cult statues in the ancient world. The temple's glory was short-lived, as it fell into disuse after being pillaged during a barbarian invasion in 267 AD, just about a century after its completion. The temple suffered over the centuries and much of its material was reused in other buildings, including houses and churches of medieval Athens. As a result, today, only 15 of its original columns are still standing. Located 500 meters east of the temple is another historic landmark. The Panathenaic Stadium is the site of an ancient stadium. Beginning in the late 5th century BC when the Great Order Legates thought to build Athens' appropriate venue to host a sporting event as part of the Panathenaic Games, one of the city's major celebrations. These games were held every four years in the ancient Greece from 566 BC to 3rd century AD, comprising an athletic competition and cultural event hosted within a stadium. The stadium was eventually completed and used for the first time in 330 BC. Now for those of you who really hate lining up like me, this is one very beautiful historic landmark that rarely gets any um, lineups as you can see. And it was first used in 330 BC where nude male athletes come to compete in track events. Uh, the work here continued until 130 AD. Uh, in modern times, it's famous for being the host site of the first modern Olympics in 1896 here in Athens.
During the Roman road, the stadium received a complete transformation changing from its original rectangular shape to a horseshoe. The capacity increased to 50,000 spectators with a seat covering with pentelic marble from the nearby Mount Pentelli. After the rise of Christianity in the 4th century, the stadium was largely abandoned and stripped of its most valuable marbles and lay buried in the soil. Following the Greece independent, archaeological excavation as early as 1836 uncovered the trace of the stadium of Hero Atticus, including some of its original marbles. The Zappa Olympics, an early attempt to revise the ancient Olympic Games, were held at the stadium in 1870 and 1875. Included in your price of your mission is access to the Olympic Museum here. It has large collection of Olympic torches that are used in the past Olympic events as well as few cauldrons. When the French gathered in 1894 World Congress to discuss the concept of a modern Olympic game, it was agreed that Athens would host the first modern Olympics in 1896. With the financial support from the wealthy merchant George Avoth, the Panathenic Stadium was reconstructed and built entirely of marbles from the Mount Pitali. It remains the only stadium in the world built entirely of marbles. The stadium hosted the opening and closing ceremony of the Athens Olympics in 1896 and was a venue for the four of the nine contested sports. By the 20th century, local come to call the venue Calamimero, meaning the beautiful marble. The venue continued to host significant cultural, sporting, and ceremonial events. During the Olympic year, the Olympic flame traveled from the ancient site of Olympia moving around Greece before finally arriving to the Panathenaic Stadium for official handover ceremony to a new host country. I still have 5 hours to kill, so I decided to head back to the airport. <laughs> I mean the wrong airport, huh? I heard I'm able to see some really nice abandoned airplanes lying around the old Athens airport or Elnikin International Airport. Since I'm also a pilot, uh, let's see if I can take one of these big birds up for a ride. Like it's really hard to find an entrance. Pretty sure some of them are open. Oh, not this one. Be really interesting. Sadly, I can't get my way in. <laughs> I guess today is not my day, and it drives me insane when I see footage like this online, and I can't get close like them. Makes me jealous. The old airport was built in 1938 and during the Nazi occupation it became a German military airbase. From 1945 to 1991 it was used by the United States Air Force and a hub for the National Carrier Olympic Airways. The airport has two terminals, west for the Olympic Airways and east for all other airlines. Just before it closed in 2001 it served over 13 passengers, <laughs> just joking, I mean 13.5 million passengers and handled 57 airlines flying to 87 destinations. The former airport is now the site of a major development for the coastal Athens with plans for luxury homes, hotels, a casino, a marina, a shop, and offices. However, with my flight departure time approaching, <laughs> it's time for me to head back to the actual functional Athens International Airport. The best option for the ride back is the airport shuttle X95 from the Cinema Square. Once again, 
be very careful of pickpocketing if you are taking the metro. Make sure you arrive at the airport no less than an hour and a half prior to your departure time. With that being said, I hope you have a safe and amazing time here in Athens. Have a pleasant flight and see you next time. Adios! Thank <laughs> you.